Hi, I'm Anthony Gosh, a London Fellowship trained consultant, spinal neurosurgeon, and I'm going to explain to you what that cracking sound is in your neck, what's causing it, and things you can do to help fix it. So there are three main causes, broadly speaking. One is changes of pressure within the joints of the spine, which I'll go into. Um, the other one is bone rubbing on bone when some of the cartilage or the grizzle, the disc between the bones has worn down. And the other one is ligaments or tendons, the attachments to the bones, sometimes sliding over the bony knuckles. First thing to, uh, to mention, none of these, most of the time, are anything you should be concerned about. But if you hang around to the end, it's a short video. I'll explain when you need to be a bit more concerned and, and, and you need to see a healthcare professional about it. So let's quickly take a look at the spine. Um, this is the whole of the spine here. This bit here is the neck or the cervical spine, thoracic spine here, which is enclosed in the rib cage, and the lumbar spine here, front and back. We zoom in a little bit. Um, each bone in your spine is made of a, vertebral, uh, a vertebra, which consists of a vertebral body, a cylindrical block of bone, with an arch of bone attached to the back of it. If you stack these up, you form a tunnel in the middle that contains your spinal cord and the nerves that uh, send messages between the body and the brain. Now, between each bone, you've got this, these uh, cushions here that we call discs. They act as kind of shock absorbers between the two bones and allow a little bit of movement or a few degrees of angulation between each bone. And then the arches at the back of the spine are each joined together by these joints here called facet joints. These are what we call synovial joints, similar to the knees and hips in that they have fluid inside them. Now, if these joints stretch a little bit um, and that fluid expands, you end up with some vacuum in there, gas bubbles form and they pop and that's what that cracking now sound is. And that happens in a lot of the synovial joints in your body. It's nothing, it's nothing to be concerned about. It's no different to when you crack your fingers, for example. So that's usually the cause when you hear that cracking sound intermittently, not all the time when you're at the sort of extremity of a movement, when you yank your neck about, and you can hear that little click every so often. That's more likely what that is. As long as you don't get a lot of pain with that, I wouldn't be worried about that. The other type of uh, cracking you get in the neck is a kind of is more of a sort of grinding sound each time you turn um, your neck. If you get that quite often, it's because the discs, this stuff between the two bones that cushions the bone, have started to wear down a bit and you've got some knuckles, these bony knuckles that form and then bone on bone kind of grinding. Similarly, that can happen in the facet joints at the back where the cartilage in between the bones is sort of soft. This blue stuff here that you see on this picture, that, that stuff starts to wear down. Um, it, it can also cause the same sort of sound. And if that's the case, you normally notice that throughout most of the range of the neck movement, I and mean, you can feel and hear that gr grinding. It can sometimes be associated with a bit of pain, depending on how badly the joints um, are worn down. Uh, but most of the time, you don't get a lot of pain with that. And again, I wouldn't be too concerned about that. But there are things we can do uh, to stop that getting worse. Now, the other thing is at the, attached to the spine are a group of muscles and what attaches them to the spine and to adjacent structures are tendons. That's, these are the tissues you get between a muscle and a bone. So when a muscle contracts, it pulls on the bone to make that specific um, movement. And sometimes where those tendons attach, as, they, as, as you move your neck, they can slide over and kind of pop over these bony prominences. And that's when you can also feel a kind of cracking or a, or a kind of clicking as well uh, through movements, which sometimes can trigger a bit of pain. So that's what happens the majority of times when you hear those uh, sounds or feel those uh, th things in your neck. And most of the time, they're not serious at all. They're just signs or just s subtle warnings that there could be some early uh, degenerative change, which is a posh phrase for you know early wear and tear. Now with the lower back, whilst I've recently done a video explaining that posture is actually not really the cause of your back pain, it's a bit of a myth, well, it's a very different story in the neck and there is evidence in the literature supporting um, posture, particularly forward posture, the neck leaning forward and long-term damage, wear and tear, degenerative change in the neck. We're seeing a lot more of it now with uh, smartphones and I am seeing it in younger patients than I was seeing it maybe 20 years ago. So if you have an office-based occupation, um, it's important to try and have your monitor at eye level 
and your back supported by the chair so that your head is more upright and looking and your eyes are looking sort of straight ahead either whether you're using standing desk or sitting down and the same applies when you're using your smart device we always look we always look down at them try and make a conscious effort to look forward either whilst you're standing or whilst you're seated a lot of the physical therapists I work with are big advocates of building up the deep flexor muscles in the neck. So imagine with your head in a neutral position, back against the wall, imagine just trying to push your chin, so to push your neck back into the wall and then look down. Uh, that's good at doing the deep flexor muscles and over time just getting more tone in those muscles can help improve that. Quite often the problem is actually a bit lower down in the thoracic spine, this bit here. So, you know, if you're used to being slouched over, you compensate by lifting the neck up. So one of the ways to correct that are exercises where you bring the shoulders back and stick the chest out. Do that with a physical therapist if it is causing you pain. Uh, they can kind of adapt the exercises to your needs. Now, if you're someone that enjoys working out or you want to at least get started, I'm a big fan of Jeff Cavalier, who's got an excellent video on neck exercises to build a stronger neck that can actually help you prevent causing uh, problems with your neck later on. There's a link to his video just below. Now, if the pain um, is getting severe, this is when I want you to start to think about seeing a healthcare professional about it. If the pain starts getting really bad in the neck, um, it hasn't really settled down after a few weeks, and it's just progressively getting worse obviously you need to see a healthcare professional either your physical therapist or your doctor or local spine surgeon um, if in, if the pain starts shooting down the arm uh, that could be an indication that you have um, a trapped nerve um, coming out of the neck either from a slip disc or some narrowing from overgrowth of some bony overgrowth and that causes pain shooting down the arm. Again, most of the time that will settle down without any invasive intervention. But if you start to notice numbness or any weakness in the arm, that's when you need to see someone urgently about it. Likewise, if you start to notice problems um, with weakness in both arms or unsteadiness in your walking, then we start to worry about the spinal cord itself being affected. So you need to see someone urgently for that. So the pain going down the arm is cervical radiculopathy or breakout and I've got a whole video on that there's a link below. And also if you've been involved in some kind of high impact injury, for example a road traffic accident, uh, a big fall um, and you haven't attended for A&E or, or your local emergency room for, for whatever reason you still experience a pain in the neck, you've got to get that looked at just in case there's a ligament or bony fracture. So I hope you found that useful. If you did, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps people suffering with spine disease find useful information that can help them. And also click the notify button for upcoming videos that we release every week. If you want to get in touch, please visit our website. We have a three-step process. Um, and by working with a team of all different professionals that deal with spine disease, osteopaths, phys physiotherapists, chiropractors, surgeons, pain specialists, we can make sure that you're seen by the right individual and find the least invasive solution that gives you the longest lasting result. Thank you.